Welcome to Polyphonic Press. I'm Jeremy Boyd. And I'm John Van Dyke. And today we're going to be talking about how the Happy Birthday song could end up being in the public domain. Here we go. All right, so you're probably thinking, um, isn't the Happy Birthday song already in the public domain? But you might have noticed in like movies and TV shows when there's a birthday scene, they actually don't sing the song. They usually substitute with something like For He's a Jolly Good Fellow or they just make something up. And the reason for that is it's actually not legally, technically in the public domain. But there is some gray area there. Uh, so recently, the history of the song basically is that these two sisters in 1893 who were school teachers uh, wrote lyrics to a song called Good Morning and sort of, uh, or did they, did they write the good, I, they must have wrote Good Morning and they, I think so. They wrote I good think morning. they wrote the music. They wrote m the music and I think they wrote the lyrics Good Morning. Yeah. And in 1935, the song wound up in a song book. No, and 1922. In 1922, the song wound up in a song book with the lyrics happy birthday as we know them today and the song i guess was never copyrighted or or something like this and a guy named his last name was summy i believe yeah uh put a basically licensed the song uh, through his company so he owned the song for a number of years and then in 1988 Warner Brothers bought his company, his publishing company, and so since 1988, for 25, 27 years, Warner Brothers has owned the rights, along with other songs, but they have owned the rights to Happy Birthday. Or so they Or so they think. thought. So now what's come out is this: there's this filmmaker who is making a documentary about the song and about who actually owns it, um, because I think she was making a, a fictional film and she wanted to use the song but she couldn't afford the rights for it um so she made a documentary about it and what has now come out in this past week is the smoking gun of the whole thing so basically what has happened is the song has ended up in a songbook in 1935 with the lyrics happy birthday that were copyrighted and the copyright runs out of that book in 1949 so basically for 27 years and before that the company before that uh, for 27 years since 88 Warner Brothers have been collecting money for a song that's uh, probably in the public domain that the copyright ran out on actually I think you were right the first time when you said 1935 because they found the book that was dated to 1922 right right that's right that's, that's right yeah, yeah. Okay. it's a little there's a lot of information here so yeah. so this uh, begs a question who uh, this, this is gets to an interesting uh, question like who actually owns if anybody the any music really because we've talked about this before is we've co I've come up with stuff that uh, sounds like other songs and uh, there's a, a whole I mean if you look at any if you watch any episode of behind the music you can see that the artist it, there's always an argument over who, who owns mm -hmm. whatever song with somebody uh, yeah. I, I think the famous one is uh, in 85 when John Fogarty was sued yeah. for sounding like himself <laughs> um, so his former company with uh, um, fantasy records the fantasy records who who did the CCR stuff yeah we're suing him while he's doing his, you know, solo stuff, because, because he happens to sound, like, you know, like to himself. Himself. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> it was stupid. It, it was, was really, really, really stupid. So that that was the that was probably the most famous lawsuit mm -hmm. about about um, song ownership. But there's been thousands over the years, and uh, so I think it's it's fascinating to me that. Because I always assumed, up until a few years ago, I think we maybe talked about it when we were doing the, the Polyphonic Press podcast. I vaguely remember talking about I think about we this, did. Um, that I just assumed that Happy Birthday was a public domain song. Uh, I had heard that it wasn't. I'd seen a documentary on corporations, and one of the things that they'd mentioned in it was mm -hmm. that the fact that they couldn't, they, they weren't, 
they had a scene with with, with a, you know a kid's birthday party, but they removed the sound, and they were explaining why they removed the sound mm-hmm. and how, where they'd rather spend the money. Yeah. So. So and we um so what this article said on CBC was that Warner Brothers were collecting two million dollars per year just on this one song alone just from licensing it to like commercials and tv and movies so two million dollars over 27 years what do we figure out it was 54 billion or 54, 54 million, million million dollars so i mean to a company like warner brothers that's not a lot of money but it's a pretty big it's chunk. still a lot of money it's still yeah i mean it's <laughs> It's, 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 it's a small, small chunk in there overall, yeah. but uh, that's still a pretty significant amount. Um, I, don't, I, I honestly don't know if they're going to have to pay back any of that, but I know, do know that if it turns out that they don't actually own the song, they're obviously going to have to stop collecting it. Well, yeah. So I mean, I, beyond that, I guess that really comes down to a, a judge's yeah. decision. And at, but at, at the same time, I, I can't blame... Warner Brothers because they bought that publishing company yeah under the uh, assumption, assumption that, that they owned that song so I, I can't really blame them well I can sort of because they put the price of the song way out of true uh, out true. of uh, the uh, reach of most people who would otherwise have used the song that's true that's true um, yeah you only really hear that song in huge big blockbuster movies where the the, they have a big budget and they can't afford to i only hear it when i'm at a birthday party (laughs) (laughs) or i mean well i mean it would be that would be an interesting uh experiment to see what movies the 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 song appears in and if that movie was released by warner brothers yeah Oh, yeah, actually, that's true, because uh, Warner Brothers would not have to pay royalties to themselves to use the song. Exactly. So, so it's true. Yeah, so so that would be an interesting experiment to see how, how many movies, or which movies, actually use that song and see if they've been released by Warner Brothers. Because, I mean, I... I remember seeing movies when I was a kid, and they were singing for He's a Jolly Good Fellow, and I thought it was weird, because I never heard that song outside of a movie or being sung at a birthday it's supposed to be like you, like a good job kind of song yeah. it's not you know to celebrate your and birthday liar liar there's a birthday party scene do they use the song i don't remember I they might that. have it's they... not it's not you know the part you remember from a movie no. like that <laughs> no but uh they might have i don't know yeah. but uh you know, this is really interesting and fascinating. Uh, let us know in the comments what you guys think. Do you think uh, Happy Birthday... Did you assume that Happy Birthday was in the public domain? Um, and uh, let me know what you think of this lawsuit. Do you think uh, Warner Brothers is right? Or do you think it should be uh, left up, uh, let go into the public domain? Let us know in the comments. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you know when we post new videos. You can check us out on Twitter and Facebook. Follow John on Twitter at Funky Dutch. And uh, that's about it. I'm Jeremy Boyd. I'm John Van Dyke. Take it easy.